Hi everyone, uh, my name is Annie and this is my partner. You can introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Hui San. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today our topic will be the, uh, the area will be in social polarization and also social dilemma. Okay, uh, so Hui San, um, now we are discussing about the social dilemma. How was your opinion about social dilemma? Uh, the first time I heard about social dilemma is from the documentary from Netflix, which uh, is very popular right now. And it shows me uh, uh, from the documentary, I learned about how the media organization control our data, control our privacy and the advertisement to make us more addicted to the social media. So what is your opinion about it? Mm, for me, right, I think, yes, social dilemma, I believe that they have social dilemma, the uh, big organization that control our data to uh, do something. But actually, for me, I feel that there's nothing very seriously la, actually like it's common because as for example la, i give you an example for facebook company okay facebook is a big organization as we know there's a lot of entrepreneurs now going online so they will use this kind of like instagram facebook to uh using their ads ads function to promote their products to let more people to know about their product so yeah I don't know if you feel that or not because uh, Facebook users can sell the product on their profile, uh, especially after what they search. Do you feel that? Uh, yes, because uh, I believe that's how the algorithm of the system work. Um, because I feel that uh, after the social media show about the business model of the social networking site, which is Facebook, Instagram, like how they work, how they run their business and how they earn money from the public, right? They actually, uh, they're just uh, showing the negative side of the business model. It's actually advertising in everywhere is a very common thing because advertising is the only way they can earn money from uh, uh, the user and the business will also get their exposure they need to the user as well. So I don't think that um, social dilemma is a big problem here that will link to our privacy because it's just how the algorithm plays the game, I believe. Yes, exactly. So uh, actually we know that, right? Uh, we think in other way for if you are a, an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you must have the using these ads to promote your product and while using this uh, advertisement to promote your product you need a specific target audience that can relate to your product which has uh, uh, who need your product as well so facebook already help us to filter they use this information that they have about the users including uh, the users interests uh, actions connections to select and personalize the advertisement offers and other sponsor content that they show to users. So I feel that if Facebook didn't do like this, right, they didn't filter, entrepreneur will actually waste time and money to advertise their product. Because if Facebook help them to promote ads without filtering, it will take a lot of time to explore the target audience for entrepreneur. Of course, uh, this also, if they spend a lot of time in, uh, the explore the target audience, right? There's no more entrepreneur will come to Facebook using Facebook ads, pay to Facebook to help them to promote ads already. And this also will cut off the source of Facebook income. Do you, do I, do you agree that? Yes, because the ads and also the social media platform need the engagement and also addiction as well they need your addition in all in the way so they need uh they can keep the user on their social media site for a lot for a longest time and also the engage will come from the content they share they promote and what they similar and what they like depending on because they keep scrolling for more content and become addicted to it so to keep on using to keep the user getting to see the ads Eventually, the privacy issue 
on advertisement is not so a problem for me personally. And I believe that user can have their own choice that do you want to expose your interest to the internet? Because according to the study, right, nearly 50% of the respondents will keep their social media account to in private mode and the others will remain just open and public, which I believe if you open the social media account in private mode, you can... Okay, sorry for the technical issue. Um, so I believe that users have their own choice to decide whether they want to expose their interest to the internet and let the internet uh, show them what they actually like and promote them what uh, more ads. So in my opinion, the way to decrease the hate on social advertisement is uh, the Facebook and Instagram that can control the amount of advertisement on one interface because I find out that most 68% of the respondents, they is fine with seeing the advertisement, but it's only if only the advertisement is not so annoying. So eventually as user, we hate to see the advertisement keep on covering our content, which we the actual content they will want to see. So I think the, you, the Facebook need to control on the interface design as well. And also the business side need to create more interesting and engaging advertisement to keep on, to keep on not annoy the user. And also smart yes, content. Exactly. It's not like those cliche, cringy content to gain attention. That's why a user can also have a choice to close the ad or also engage with your ad as well. So that's yes. all my point for this uh, social dilemma. La. Yes, exactly. Oh my god, I'm very ugly for that. <laughs> okay, so now it comes to social polarization. As we know that, right, Hui San, uh, social polarization is inequality happens so that will cause us there's a war between people, like rich people and uh, poor people, something like that. Lah. Okay, so how about your opinion, Hui San? Uh, in my opinion, social polarization can lead to social dilemma as well, which the politician and government can control the media organization or themselves have different stands. And when society are polarized, the new media will shape and leading the public of opinion of today. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You know what? Because of, I have one example for this. La. Actually, it's about the inter ethnic economy. Okay, so I have uh, watched watch, uh, a piece of news before that mm -hmm. uh, on social media and also the radio station. La. It's about that our Malaysian government talking about the inter ethnic economy. They use social media to make people think that Chinese are ranked first in terms of economic income, you know. Well, the Malays are ranked last. Means that, which means that uh, they just directly talk, you know, they just directly talk uh, Chinese in Malaysia is uh, rich people. Lah. The, their meaning is rich people and uh, uh, Malays is ranked in last because their uh, income is not very much and Chinese, the income is very much something like that. So, you know, this, uh, this news has caused us that dissatisfaction uh, among many Chinese because the government reversed right and wrong in order to help Malays. And from the perspective of Malays, right, <clears throat> in the Malays side, they were naturally think that, okay, uh, I'm, uh, Malay income is very low, low than uh, Chinese. So they, do, uh, they will feel like uh, Chinese is the rich people and it will cause some people, you know, there's a robbery, something, right? Some people even have malicious intention to rob the Chinese. So, you know, uh, the robbery cases more, more often happen on Chinese. Yeah, this is the problem, you know, the social polarization. So, do you have any about this? Um, in my opinion, social polarization in Malaysia will lead to tensions among Malaysians, where it happens like any division, diverse race, and politics parties. Like, as you mentioned, the races will have different uh, opinions about each 
of them. And also, I believe most of it will happen because of the users and gratification as well, because users and gratification will lead to echo chamber which because they want to see and hear based on their preference, but not the facts of the news and information. They rely on the knowledge of their motivation motivation to make media choices that will help them to meet their specific wants and needs. Like for example, some certain people will rely on the news on Facebook but they did not do enough research to believe and trust the news on Facebook and but they only exposed to Facebook and they did not look at more uh, perspective like the newspaper, the radio, the TV as well. Also, the new uh, the media is selected based on their expectation that it will satisfy specific needs and desire, and the news organization themselves also have their own political stance, such as the stars, and also TV Tigger in Malaysia, uh, the great example we can say, and the way they report the news and will also affect how the public opinion to be formed because they got the pressure from the outside, the media organization. They're also the gatekeeper themselves of the news. So I believe that it will also affect the trust in the news if they were controlled by the uh, government or the politician or the other pressure from the outside. In, according to the statistic, of uh, Ipsos, 71% of Malaysia agreed that people need to be more sensitive the way they talk. And he also told that the political party polarization of the country is the key source of tension for Malaysia because everyone had different supports and different understanding of the for the political parties because Malaysia we have more many different political parties and also between the rich and poor. For example, the news lately happened, the government decided to impose the 51% equity for Bumi Purta in non-Bumi Purta companies in the logistic sectors in order to obtain a custom license, which means that, uh, simple understanding, uh, so which means that the company itself, like I'm the owner of the company, but I'm not a Bumi Putra, right? But I have to give up 51% of my company to a Bumi Putra in order to get the license to continue my business. I believe that this is also a typical case of social polarization because the government willing to help the B40 people and also the Bumi Putra, but their action is to spoon feed them, like asking us, uh, from taking from us and giving them as well in a way so yes. it doesn't fair for us who work so hard by ourselves to get this but then I have to give out to people who doesn't help or work in my industry before who doesn't even useful in our business because I giving them 51% like half of the company but it doesn't make sure uh, giving them doesn't make sure that they will help back in our business or try to boost our business in a way. So I believe that some politicians in Malaysia love to using racial races to dispute to sow the discord. So I believe that the only solution in my conclusion, the solution for social polarization is to expose to different source of news and information to avoid echo chamber and exchange your perspective with others to understand their stance. Like, of course, uh, those uh, who you exchange their understanding with need to be like those politicians, like professional, but not only the same level as you. Because people, when uh, you exchange your ideas with people from your same level, you will have the similar understanding. But I believe that we need to expose to more professional, more in-depth understanding. Only with that we can know more about it, learn more about it, instead of keep yes, on exchanging exactly. the same information. Do you agree with that? Yes, exactly. I agree. And also, I feel that um, even, even the media have uh, uh, what they report have a trust, but uh, people also need to like uh, go and do research whether mm. their news is uh, tr trustly, uh, trustfully or not, yeah, like that. Yes. Yeah, because the doubt, like mm, the social polarization, I think is important for the government itself and also the media organization because they are the one that control the public opinion. They control what we think in a way, and so we react 
as they expected. So they can keep on having this social issue to come out. Like just now we mentioned the case of the uh, how the finance and also how the 51% of the equity need to be diverse. I believe these all are the cases are their intention to make us think that uh, Bumi Putra are bad and Bumi Putra uh, just, we just need to spoon feeding them in a way. So if we want to build a better Malaysia, like a peaceful Malaysia, I believe that the media and the government need to stop, stop doing these stop all it. social polarizing things. Like, yes, exactly. Why we, I also confuse sometimes why we have to judge the financial situation based on our races, like Chinese earn more, Malays earn more, or in a way, who earns more. I know, more. right? But yeah. everyone has different uh, work and different background. Why we have to judge it by our races, which will cause like, fights and also not peaceful in Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, so this will make the inequality happen. So yeah, I also very confused why you want to judge between races. Yeah, so... Yeah, is uh, the solution is stop it, stop this polarization for people. Yes, okay. I also agree with them. So I mean, it's easy to say, but it's hard to bring it to action as well because, um, like as you know that the politics are not our choice, but I think we can make a choice to them since now we can hmm. vote. At our age. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I believe um, everyone just need to yeah, be more sensitive about this kind of issue, this kind of polarization. So the society will be better and also the society will act the way that you want if you didn't voice out, you know. You can't yeah. just sit at home and voice out through internet, through social media, and then expect the social, the society will work the way you, you want it to run, right? Because too but complicated. Yeah, <laughs> the important thing is you need to take action. Yeah, it's the action is better. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the end of our discussion for the yes. social polarization. So thank you, yeah. Annie, for sharing your perspective. Thank you, Hui San, also. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, so we'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, bye.